Hi guys, Mike here. In this video, I wanted to show you just a quick tip that can be used on our MR1 CNC gantry mill for creating very accurately sized bores and holes. It involves using a boring operation in CAM software, and essentially this creates a helical ramping downward move, as you can see here, that creates a very accurately sized hole. So let's get into it. So I'm working on the design of a part that needs to locate a bearing very accurately. And so to do that, I need to have a bearing bore that is almost the exact size of the bearing with a little bit of clearance. So I'm using a standard 608 bearing. This has an OD of 22 millimeters, which is about 0.866 inches. So I grabbed my calipers just to measure this bearing that I have and it matches perfectly. So to design this bore, I'm gonna oversize the bore by 1,000th. So essentially that's 866 plus the thousandth gives me that 867 dimension. So I've already gone ahead and created these two programs um, and I'm just gonna kind of highlight some of the things that I did in these programs. So the first one is going to be just a normal pocket. I'm just gonna clear this out and I'm gonna leave a little bit of stock for our boring operation. So this is a, I'm using a 3 8 two flute end mill and I left, I believe, three thousandths, yeah, three thousandths of radial stock to leave. So if this bore nominally was eight, six, seven, it's gonna leave three thousandths all the way around. So if I were to measure this, it'd really be undersized by six thousandths or eight, six, one after finishing. So once that's completed, um, I'm going to run this boring operation. And what this is, is essentially just a helical ramp move all the way down here. And the reason that this is important is because it loads the tool in the right way for creating very accurately sized bores by just taking a couple thousandths, um, essentially 40 thousandths around each revolution. I'm, I'm really loading up the tool instead of finishing the contour all the way down, which could put a deflection on the tool inward, which can result in a tapered hole. And when you're trying to fit something very accurately into a bore, that's a problem. So this really is the right way to do boring if you're going to be using circular interpolation with an end mill. So what I will do then is this operation will essentially clean it up to our finished size and hopefully the bearing will just fall right into place. So let's go out to the machine and start making some cuts. Okay, so recall that our pocketing operation should have finished with some stock to leave, giving us a diameter of 0.861. So not surprisingly, I'm measuring 0.859 here. Um, you know, since the finished pass on this contour was at full depth, it looks like the tool did deflect a little bit inward, causing a hole that is about 2,000 undersized. Now, you're probably thinking that's not terrible, but if you have a, you know, situation like this where I need a bearing to fit in a bore with a very precise slip fit, you know, we need to do better, which is why we're going to use that boring operation next. Now, just a quick caveat here, I am using calipers like this to measure the inside diameter of this bore. And that's pretty much a huge no-no if you want to get to the accuracies that we're looking at here. It's really best to use an ID mic, but for something quick and dirty like this, I think it gets the point across. Okay, now that our boring finish pass is complete, we can take a quick measurement and see how we did. We were shooting for 0.867 and looking at this measurement and it looks like we're exactly right where we want to be. So now we can grab the bearing and see how it fits. So having done a lot of these projects, um, I can tell, you know, as that bearing went in, it's got a very nice fit. The bearing had to be oriented just the exact right way for it to get to drop in. And after I pulled the part out, I did put an ID mic on it just to see how we did. And it was exactly that 0.867 we were looking for. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I think this is a very good tip if you guys are looking for ways to size accurate holes and bores using an end mill. So thanks for watching.